Welcome back to Seven Skills for the Future podcast series two. I'm Emma Sue Prince and I'm joined by my producer, James. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. So this podcast is all about putting you into the driving seat of your own life. You are going to be so much happier and live a life of purpose and meaning just by using seven skills. Those skills are adaptability, critical thinking, empathy, integrity, being proactive, being optimistic and being resilient. So in this series, I explore specific themes linked to those skills. I have some great interviews lined up for you. And also for the first time, we're going to be introducing questions from our listeners. So last episode, we had our first question and we're going to be looking at another one today and uh, in each episode. If you have a question that you want answering, get in touch via our Instagram, 7 Skills for the Future feed, or find me on Twitter or the website Unimenta, and yours might get included. Remember too that if you want more, just buy the book, 7 Skills for the Future, out now in all major bookstores via Amazon and other online retailers. So, Emma Sue, uh, what's the theme for today's episode? In this episode, I want to talk about improvisation. We use improv a lot on our seven skills workshops. So these are awareness raising workshops on those seven skills that we run with lots of different groups. And we use improv because of its strong connection with all seven skills. So, James, when you think of improv, what does it make you think of? Uh, well, I'm a big comedy fan, so I tend to think of improv comedy and I suppose uh, it's used a lot in drama as well. So yes when we think of improv we do we think of drama we think of jazz or comedy and in comedy improv the actors must work together to create a compelling story and plot without a script. It sounds ingenious and maybe it is but actually these actors are highly trained and they use techniques and principles that enable them to do this. So it looks as if they're being completely spontaneous and in the moment, but they're actually trained in these skills over and over again. So in this podcast, I want to explore how you can take those sorts of principles and apply them to your own life. And this will help you apply all seven skills. So what sorts of principles and techniques do you think they are using in order to create that compelling scene, that plot, et cetera, but without a script? Well, they are actually using the same principles all the time. And those principles are listening, accepting, commitment, support, being spontaneous and saying yes. And they also use a simple yes and, so that at least you're starting from an open-minded place and building on an idea. So saying something like yes and is really effective simply in a meeting or just having a conversation with someone close to you or a friend. It just opens up the conversation and there is possibility. So actors who are using improv will always go from a yes and perspective. They support each other. They accept what the other person is saying. They commit to the action they're taking or, you know, whatever they're going to be saying next. They're spontaneous and there's a lot of support between the players. So you mentioned that you use these principles in your workshops. What sort of exercises do you do and how do you actually get people to do them? Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, one thing we've noticed is whether we're working with doctors or lawyers or software engineers or graduates, they all love doing these exercises. Um, and of course, we, you know, the trainers and myself, we are not comedy improv actors, um, but we know how to facilitate exercises. So... Um, some of our workshops are not very long. 
uh, but we still manage to get people to really engage with it. So the way we do it is we'll do warm ups. Um, and actually one exercise that we do is just to get people to say yes to phys- physically as well as emotionally. So they can feel the energy of actually saying yes. Um, and then we'll do uh, a yes and exercise, which is a classic improv one. So it's simply building on what the other person has said. It's a bit like storytelling. Um, you have to begin with yes and every time somebody has said something to create a story, to build a story. And this immediately highlights our natural tendency to block other people's suggestions. So we often do that immediately without listening properly. Um So one really important thing about these kinds of exercises is the facilitator needs to be able to reflect back what's happening and allow the group to process the exercise fully and think of times in their lives when they don't say yes or when they block other people and then identify a time really soon when they can apply that skill or that saying yes. Okay, so what are some of the things that listeners could do straight away to try and get more of this into their lives? Well, the great thing is that there are some immediate things that you can do. You don't have to be trained. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to go to an improv class. You don't even have to come to one of our workshops, although, of course, we would love you to. Um, but there's some really easy ways that we can get all get more of this into our lives. So the first one is to simply say yes more. So in an improvised scene, if you don't say yes, nothing happens and nothing gets created. And that's the same in life. So if you say yes, it leads to possibility, surprise, progress, relationships, learning, excitement. But so often we resist and we say no. It might be an inner no, but it will be a no. So there is a lot of energy in saying yes, which is why we get people to actually physically say yes and feel it. And the more you say that yes, the more you will receive the more you say no or you're critical uh, or you block, um, the more that will come across to other people. So this is about being open minded, being generous, being understanding. Um, it's really hard work. So, you know, the next time you hear yourself saying a kind of knee jerk no to something, just have a look at what you're turning down. Is it really a threat? So saying yes um, just makes the world more interesting. So that's the first one is, is saying yes. Um The second is to start anywhere. So improvisers are taught to go with the first thought. So when you start a scene, it would be totally against the rules of improv to just stand there shifting through possible lines, you know, before beginning. You've just got to start where you are. You know, you dive in and you just use whatever is there. You can't sit around waiting for inspiration, Um, you know. So I think in life, no matter what you're doing, so whether you're trying to create a presentation or start a new project or you're looking for ideas, just dive straight in. Because if you're indecisive, it gets you nowhere and just wastes a lot of time. And and I see this a lot in my friends and family. Um, So it really is about taking action and moving towards something. And the third one is to simply take more risks. So... Improv is about leaping into the unknown and and to keep leaping into the unknown. So it's, you know, we we hold ourselves back a lot more than we think and we make excuses to not do something. And funnily enough, when we do that, even other people around us will support us in that decision. So, you know, any excuse you make for not doing something difficult, you can counter it with the question, what's the worst that can happen? Generally, it's rejection. But that won't kill you, you know. So the more you take risks, the easier it is to face up to what seems difficult. And then you become more confident and you, you know, you keep trying out new things. The fourth one is to be okay with being good enough. So there's no such thing as a perfect improvised scene. So the sketch may have, you know, boring bits, clumsiness, misunderstandings. But that same scene can also be really entertaining and inspiring and hilarious. And it's the same with life. You know, your life's never going to be perfect. So when you set very high standards for yourself, and I have to say, I've learned this the hard way. um, But when you do that, you tend to have them for other people too. And so you become a very harsh critic and you can be quite difficult to be around. That's not great. So it's about acknowledging successes and just checking perspective on things and knowing when good is enough. Another thing we can do is just be more supportive. So I said at the beginning that support is one of the big principles of improv. 
are you taking all the responsibility for a scene? Why? You've got a whole group of people out there who can, you know, in the scene with you, who can help you. Um, so you've got other people, use them, share the job, spark off each other. It's all about collaboration. And so we can do the same thing in life. You know, we can collaborate with each other. So in improv, it's, if everyone's out for themselves and they're keen to show how great they are, the scene won't work. So it's all about making other people look good. If you do this in real life, you'll notice immediate results when you give other people credit. So with other people, there's no behavior that is more effective than kindness. It's the most effective behavior that you can practice. So it's doing kind things, saying kind things, looking for the good, making compliments less rare. And those sorts of things are the same as what's called an improv making an offer. It's the same kind of principle. And the last one is noticing and listening. And this is something we're really bad at and we're getting worse. But it's about paying a bit more attention, listening a bit more and slowing down a bit. And and just doing that, the impact is immediate. So if you pay attention, you become more aware of things like body language. If you want to show empathy, one of our seven skills, just try mirroring their body language or speech patterns. And police officers are actually trained to do this. It's just paying attention. Um, So in improv, the actors who pay most attention to what's going on in the moment are the most effective and they will have the right words and the right actions. So in life, we will often skim over details because we're too caught up in our own stuff. Um, So just pay attention more. Next time you're out for a walk in nature, next time you're having a conversation with someone, notice how often one of you interrupts the other observing yourself when you're triggered to say something or you know your opinion you can't wait to say what you're thinking so it's really simple things like that around noticing and listening asking more questions connecting responding to what someone is saying so even if you disagree with someone you've got a far greater chance of putting your case across if they feel they've been properly listened to and they do feel it so these are some simple ways that we can all bring a little more improv into our lives in the everyday. And I think they really do help with developing all seven of these skills. That's fantastic advice, Emma Sue. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take a quick break and we'll come back with a question from one of our listeners. Okay, welcome back. So I think it's time we take a question from our, one of our listeners. The question today is from Alison in the UK. Alison asks, how do I stop being so reactive to situations, say, if someone annoys me at work? Emma Sue, what do you think? It's a great question. I think with every situation and with every encounter, there is a small space between what someone's saying to you that annoys you and how you choose to respond to it so when we're reactive we we respond straight away so I think a simple way is to just make that space a little bit bigger and you can do that simply by taking a breath not answering immediately and that can help with a more measured response so I think that's the first thing to try to um, bring that more under control It's really important that you do bring it under control because if not, the danger is that you will be perceived as someone who is reactive and critical and just not pleasant to be around. You know, Uh, you might get perceived as the annoying person. So it's really important that we do control our responses to situations and responses to other people and to understand that, yes, it can trigger all kinds of things in us. But if we can just make that space bigger before we respond, we are more likely to have a more measured response. Okay, thank you. And thank you to Alison for the question. Uh, I think that just about wraps it up for today's episode, Emma Sue. What do you think? Yes, I think it does. So thank you everyone for listening and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for listening to the 7 Skills for the Future podcast. 
There are all sorts of things you can do to boost each of the seven skills. If you want more ideas, you can buy the book, Seven Skills for the Future. You can also go online to our website, Unimenta, and join as a member, and you'll be able to access more resources, ideas, and free downloads. If you have a question you want to ask on these podcasts, get in touch through Instagram at 7 Skills for the Future or on Twitter and Facebook at Unimenta. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your podcast player of choice. <laughs>